Video, okay, and you my video. Let's make it larger. Okay. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as usually, we start with quiz, and hopefully, you already see quiz with screen sharing. <coughs> it relates to golden section one dimensional minimization of function. And what I propose you assume that, <coughs> that I have uncertainty interval uh, from zero to one. This is my initial interval when me I know that minimum is located, and my function is uh, written here. It's absolute value of x minus zero forty nine. So it's a little bit left from the middle of interval. And what I ask you to to do with hands two three iterations of golden section method, and there there is a constant in golden section. You have this uh, constant tau. Uh, you can take it approximately with say two digits of accuracy or may, maybe we will have even a volunteer who will calculate tau and uh, say what yeah. number what, what number it is can anybody tell us what is approximately tau with say three digits after approximately 0 0.3819 uh, once again zero zero Point three eight one nine. Three eight uh three eight two will be enough for us. Zero three eight two. Okay, and uh, we will get back to our quiz. And here is my request to you. Start with this uncertainty interval de delta naught, and uh, of course divide it with two points inside. And decide which subinterval you do, and do it twice. And here I even wrote for you approximate value of tower that you may use. Okay. And now, because this problem, it's uh, alg algorithm uh, requ requires some mental work. Yes, it's not automatically. Uh, that's why uh we just continue now working together we will find a, a volunteer to show us his solution and uh, maybe uh, better if he will have uh, something like ipad something with the electronic pen or if not it's also may, may work is anybody volunteering to show his solution and then we will discuss I will stop my share now. Okay. So any volunteer? So you don't have to upload it now. You may just uh, wait and participate and upload in the end. So no volunteers. Wow. Everybody is shy. Yeah, so I need uh, to ask personally, anybody 
who writes, but, but don't, don't please don't put your hands down. Uh, no, once more. Okay. I see Ori just arbitrary. Yeah, but I don't have um, an iPad, so. Okay, anybody else? Uh, I can show it if there's no one. But I... uh, let, let's wait. Uh, who, uh, you can show as well if, if needed. Itamar, okay. Okay, you do, do you have an electronic pen? I, I just uploaded it to the to my ah, computer. Okay, I have so a tablet. We will but it's a... to correct something. We, we will show with the. Uh... Okay. We can do it with annotations. Okay. I mean directly okay. on the. Okay, so just share your screen. Oh, you, you, you know, it, Itamar. Wait a second. Wait a second. Could, could, could you stop your sharing, and uh, maybe what I will, I will do, I will share my screen again, and we will go first of all through the method, and then uh, solve this uh, solve this example. Uh, sure, no problem. Okay. I am sharing and I put okay. And once more, one more step. Okay. Here is the golden section method. So I just uh, remind you. So we start with some uncertainty in interval. And uh, divide, we put uh, two points inside. So we had the uh, end points A and D, and B and C internal points in the way that uh, if a function in B is smaller than C, then uh, our new interval will be ABC, for example. And vice versa, it will be B, C, D, if value in C smaller than value in B. So in this exa example, which we took in the lecture, uh, we, we, uh, now delta one is our new smaller in, in interval. It is uh, reduced by the factor, by which factor I should, an annotate it's like uh, one minus tau yes and tau we, we, we told that this is uh, approximately how much zero three uh, eight two tau yes so one my min minus tau you can calculate zero point, zero point six. Mm -hmm. uh, tell it again. Zero point six one eight. Zero point six uh, one eight. One eight. Okay, you're right. Okay, so we uh, reduced our interval, and good thing that in new interval we we already had some uh, one old point which we calculated function already. And only one new point is needed. This is tau multiplied by delta one. And from this condition, that new point, that only one point will be needed, that all point, old point divide already. New interval in our proportion, just pay attention that point B was closer to the left part of large interval. And now it's closer to the right part of new small interval. And uh, here we have one more. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe uh, if, if you have any comment and question with this, and then we will uh, let our volunteer to show example. Any question, any comment? 
okay so uh, yes ev everything is very clear after you worked very hard in the beginning okay i i will stop my share and uh, who uh, who was the itamar or who i don't remember yes it was me yes oh, like me to show yes, my screen yes yes yes, yes, yes. I just want to be sure that I am uh, also recording. Participants. Yes, I see that I am. Okay, yes. I'm with you. And we all are with you. Uh, I, do, I don't hear. Itamar? Do you hear me now? Yes, yes, now yes. Okay, so it's uh, basically technical steps as we have seen in the recording of the lecture. Um, a, in each iteration, I denoted A, B, A, D, and C using a number uh, defining in which iteration we are talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, here I'm using the delta zero, but it's okay. It's, uh, I could denote them as zero, but never mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we started by, uh, the, uh, by calculating the values for each one of them. So A is zero uh, and B equals to tau times delta zero. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's 0 0.382. And such for uh, D and C also, we calculate the values. And, and then- uh, at, the, at this point, uh, could we approximately put it on your plot? It will be easier to follow. Yes, yes. Okay, so I'll make a draw. So here is uh, on the first step. This is A, hold on. Mm -hmm. And approximately, let's say here, we have B. And here, we have C. Mm -hmm. And here, we have D. Okay. Because now, important problem, which, which sub-interval uh, sub we do, we choose next, yes. Yes, exactly. So now we um, we calculate the values of the function f in b and in c. Yes. And then we need to see what happens. So we obviously we can see that f of c equals to 0 0.128, which is larger than uh, 0 0.108. Okay. And therefore, the interval in the next iteration will be uh, a and c. So I will yeah, now if, use if different color. Mark the interval with some. Yeah. So gold, now gold we light. are. So now we are talking about this interval. Okay. Um, and we will need to calculate again the uh, the edges or the the partial to, of intervals of this interval. Mm -hmm. So right now we have over here a. We need to calculate also uh, what we did before, which is written here, the delta one, which is uh, one minus tau times delta zero, mm -hmm. which in this case is zero point six one eight. So from there we can calculate both of uh, a, b, uh, d, and c in this iteration. So we can say that approximately if here is A, then let's suppose that over here is B. Mm -hmm. And over here on the edge of the new interval is D. And over here is C. Okay. This and iteration. My, and my immediate question, in this new interval, do we have an internal point which we already used? Yes, we use the D. Uh, not, not, not only external extreme points, but inside the new interval. Oh, inside the new interval. Actually, it's a C point. Uh, so maybe the, the drawing is not as much yes, as correct. Yes, but we, see. Uh, but, but we can remember that new point C. Yes, yes. It's yeah, like... So no old points 
Yeah, so maybe I should draw it much more uh, in a reasonable way. So hold on. You, you can Trying try. Trying to do the draw. So C is actually where it has been, I believe. Uh, hold on. Yeah, so C is actually approximately here, where it was B in the first place, I believe. Um, well, it's a bit confusing, but let's suppose uh, the yes, it's yes. Be supposed like this, but eventually the interval A and B and C and D is supposed to be in the same size. Over here it's yes. not, but a, a B the same as C D, yes. B C yes, may yes, be exactly. different. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, either way, from here it's the same steps as we did before. Yes. So we get that. F of B equals to 0 0.254, which is larger than F of C, which equals to 0 0.108, which yes. have, we have already done before. So we don't actually need to calculate it again. This is one of the advantages, I believe, in this uh, algorithm. And then, therefore, in the next interval, we are going to use this interval, B and D of this iteration, which is uh, 0.0236. And 0 0.618. And if, if you can with bold line uh, uh, yes. or something show this last interval on, on your plot. On a plot? Yes. So let me go a bit upstairs like this. So I believe that this will be, I will draw it in a different uh, color. This should be our next interval which makes sense because we know that in this uh, simple function 0 0.49 is the minimum yes, so. and obviously it's located in this interval okay itamar uh, thank you very much but do, don't remove your don't remove your drawing any any question any comment i really want our participant i i want to have somehow conversation it's not easy. I I know when we don't see faces uh, of each other. So yeah, it, actually, it's only actually... if anybody is volunteering to show his face on uh, YouTube, you you can open your camera. But it's really up to you. Ye I have yes. A comment or question? You actually yes. taking the V shape, the, the, the next V shape, huh? Uh. uh so I I'm uh, uh, okay. I may try to show graphically. I think I also may somehow to put uh, with. Uh, do I have right to annotation on somebody's plot? Oh, Itamar, can you show v, v combination on the uh, on the last in interval? Yes. The, this was the, the question. Okay, yeah. at least uh, at the last intro. Okay, can you draw symbolically which function value is larger, which smaller, and so on? In our last interval? Uh, last one be, before last. What, what is convenient for you? Or those which you already computed, for, for example, yes? Okay, so if we'll put like the edges of our last interval, so if we put, I will draw it also, or I will calculate it. Ah, it moves everything. Yes, the drawing was on the on the same place, but your picture moved. You oh, you to, right. to move so, <laughs> picture towards drawing. Okay, and uh, just symbolically show. So we know, so let's suppose that our last interval was from here to here. But I'm drawing in purple. Yeah. So visually, I believe that we can see, and I believe that this is also like the correct answer that in the in this case, in the right edge, which is 0 0.618, the value of the function is is lower. 
But I, I need some drawing, some V sign to put put victory on your final interval. Or <laughs> one before final, it's easier because you already evaluated everything. Draw symbolically the the graph on your you 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 have values in three points, yes? Yes. Which uh, if you connect them, you have sign V. And if if not, I I, I will try to show it on. So maybe you. Uh, okay. Let, 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 let me let me move to the le lecture slide. Maybe it will be easier. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, any 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 other question? Okay. I, I I'll move to my lecture slide. You need to reduce time. Uh, let, let, let me show my lecture slide and we will di discuss maybe there. Uh, which one? I hope this one. Uh, okay. Okay. So, uh, the general question if if we i i do my annotation if i had an interval here ad yes and i discovered that b is smaller than c if i connect function values what what i will discover i i will do it with, with blue uh, some value at C, value is at B is smaller, yes. And uh, value at A usually is larger than value at B. So I will have, oops, it's not good. Uh, undo. I will have this kind of V combination. If I connect those three points, I will have V combination. Okay. This, is, this is providing that we know that there is a minimum in this section. Maybe it's at the, 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 the left side or the right side. So uh, the, uh, this is the whole point. If, if I have an interval AD, with two inner points, and I know that value in B is smaller than value in C, the, and my function is unimodal, it's very important. Uh, unimodal function we have on other slide. I'm not sure that I have it here, but I will there is this, it is We, we had it on side. the slide. You mean this is decreasing in one side and, and increasing on the other side? And on the yeah, side. Yes, uh, I, I will stop my drawing for, for a moment. And uh, you see uh, in bisection, we showed this unimodal function, yes? It may be non-convex, but it did decreasing on the left uh, side from the minimum and the increasing on the, on the right. So if, if I have two points, uh, then right point is uh, larger than left. I know that minimum cannot be on the right of the right point. Okay. Are you with me? Yes, but, but it doesn't have to be convex. Can we have an example of non something that is not convex? Uh, your sound, your sound is really not so good. Can we say it not have to be doesn't have to be convex? Yeah, it, it doesn't have to be convex like you see on this plot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is this function it's, convex just no. by eyeballing? It's not convex yeah. because here I may connect with straight line those two points, and linear function will be. Uh, I can yeah, the second resume my is, is, draw, 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 drawing for, for a second. If I connect those oops it's not very linear yeah, yeah. those two points with linear function it will be below my function so this at least this part is not is not convex 
but uh, I don't re require convexity. I require unimodality in the sense that there is a minimum, and uh, on the right hand of the minimum, it's monotonically increasing, and on the left, it's monotonically decreasing. And that's in, uh, in, in enough to have this uh, nice condition that we we combination uh, works for. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me. Uh, how can I annotate? Clear. Okay. Uh, okay. So once more. I uh, we, we finalize the golden section method is to divide uh, our interval in some proportion and between two inner points we compare and we see whether we can be if if uh, b is smaller than c we, then we know that our minimum is in interval ac and by vice versa and we continue with, with this okay uh, we also had the bisection method which is uh, very very simple uh, do you have any questions any comments about bisection okay it's really simple and then we had uh, two methods uh, related to polynomial interpolation of our function which we minimize quadratic and cubic interpolation and uh, so if 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 I have a function which is uh, very close to quadratic one how can I find the, its minimum I just it's enough to see my function in three point to draw quadratic parabola and find minimum of parabola if my function is quadratic or very close to quadratic I, I will find my minimum in one step but if, if it's uh, relatively close to quadratic uh, it will uh, converge in some number of iterations but may converge very fast and uh, if, if you zoom any function around minimum like uh, if I even uh, we do experiments with the previous year students. Uh, if if I have a cosine function, for for example, yeah, yes, I, I I will may draw here. I have the origin, and uh, uh, what I want uh, one minus cosine. Uh, cosine at zero is is one. And one minus cosine will be like quadratic parabola in the in the bottom part, and then it will increase and de decrease and so on. I can draw with my pen and continue on this way. And this, for example, is one. So th this is one minus uh, cosine. Uh, I don't know. T. If 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 one will consider this function in the neighborhood of its minimum, if if I will uh, uh, take some small interval which is uh, in which is uh, say uh, zero one or even small uh, sm smaller, if if I will do if I will zoom this interval and do plot with MATLAB I will discover that uh, my plot is very very close to quadratic parabola this uh, what we did in one maybe two years ago with the students volunteers so if if I am very well approximate my function very well approximated with quadratic parabola in very uh, small number of iter iteration I get uh, very good accuracy so uh, how uh, how can I draw 
quadratic parabola if I have three points. Yes, uh, I have uh, points A, B, C, and I evaluated my function in, in those three points. And for example, Q is my quadratic function. And uh, I just wrote it here. Yes. For for example, my quadratic function is alpha uh, alpha x square plus beta x plus gamma, and uh, I evaluate it in uh, three points. And I have this system of equations. Uh, what are my variables? I have question to everybody. Yeah, alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha, beta, and gamma. And who is talking now? You should work really on your microphone a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, uh, it's good that, that you are participating. Uh, so, with respect to alpha, beta, the, the, despite that we, we have some quadratic terms, uh, a squared, b squared, and so so on. With respect to those three variables, it's just linear system of equations, and if we solve it. We get our co coefficients, and then we, when we have parabola, we can find analytically. We equate to zero its derivative and find the minimum. Okay, let me. How can I clear all drawings? Okay, annotations. And now I added a little bit more the, this year. Actually, uh, in, instead of solving explicitly system of equ equation, the clever mathematicians already thought about this problem, and there is a way, maybe you know about this, uh, uh, to approximate, uh, uh, to interpolate any function with a polynomial via Lagrange polynomial. So, in the very general setting, this was not in the, lec in the lecture, but uh, I will tell a little bit about this. So, uh, if, if I had uh, have k, po uh, k points with uh, k function values, and those points are non uniformly spread over uh, axis x, uh, having uh, k, is, uh, k plus one such pairs. I can build the polynomial. The, there is already a rule how to build this polynomial. It's sum of uh, uh, Lagrange basis polynomials, L, L, J, L, J, and uh, each of those polynomials has this uh, basic formula which says that it's a product of such terms. Uh, I uh, in denominator I put product of differences of my point is Lj yes of point Xj minus uh, all other points and this product is in denominator right is opened here yes and uh, in numerator it's current x where you want to evaluate this polynomial minus uh, all points except of point j and uh, here I, I i even bring our example oops uh, with the quadratic case quadratic case we have only three points say x0 x0 x1 and x2 and uh, here's the explicit formula of this uh, uh, interpolation polynomial and uh, we can even check I, I i want when uh, x is equal to x naught i want my polynomial to be equal to which number can you help me y zero y zero no. okay let's check Instead yeah, of x, I then... put x zero here. Yes, in numerator. I have x zero minus x one multiplied by x zero minus x two, 
And what do I have in denominator? The same. The same. So this is one. So at least such simple test, this formula passes. So at, at every point, uh, and of course, uh, at point uh, x equal one, x equal x one, this term will be one. Yes, Th this term. Yes. But what about, the, what about the what about the first term? Yes, yes, yes. The first term and the last term. Yes. You you yeah, you, yeah. you you told right. Uh, I don't see who yeah, is. It will cancel out. It will cancel out because x one yes. minus x one. Yeah. Yes, be, because you you have x one minus uh, x x one in other terms. So it's very nice formula. So actually, you don't have to solve explicitly system of equations you just substitute to this formula <coughs> and the, if if you look uh, in wikipedia uh, and other sources you 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 even might find explicit formula not only for polynomial we we want uh, not only polynomial we uh, we want uh, minimizer of this uh, polynomial yes minimizer of our quadratic function <laughs> and one can just write explicit formula for this minimizer about that okay. so it would be quadratic between three points uh, some some quadratic form and between our three others it would be some other quadratic form uh, i i really have because i see in the picture it's not quadratic it's, it's something very strange it is a uh, uh, just a second you 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 are telling about this picture yes yes Yes, for a lot uh, of this picture is for general case when we have a k point a k plus one point because you see it starts from x zero then we can build polynomial of degree k and in particular case if we have only three points and forget about all others then we only will build polynomial which moves through those three points and of course the plot will be different in a quadratic case uh, the plot oops i don't know how so in the general case it will be it, uh, it, it should be parabola it just by by uh, just let yeah. me do undo uh, it should be quadratic parabola which passes through those three points in the general case, it can be any any uh, line. Yes. But in, in uh, one dimensional optimization, for practical go, uh, purposes, we really most interested in uh, quadratic and cubic interpolation. And the reason is that we don't want to play with such uh, approximation, which are uh, multimodal. We, we have a very nice criterion with this V combination to be sure that our interpolation, if we choose some uh, interval, then uh, our minimum of our interpolation and also minimum of our actual function will be inside this interval. This is a good thing about. And uh, of course, there, there is a safeguard as well. Any question, any comment? So the cubic case is the a special case of a Lagrange polynomial? Uh, you see Lagrange polynomial, like we see it here, it, you, it doesn't use slopes, yes? It uses only function values. And, uh, yeah. and we in cubic, in our cubic interpolation, we used slopes. So it was enough for, for us to have two points, uh, two points and so two. Can we generalize slopes. the Lagrange polynomial to have also slopes or something like uh, that? Actually, I, I, I will tell you honestly, I didn't learn this topic, but if somebody wants with some uh, minor bonus uh, or just for pleasure to learn it and uh, report us, it would be very nice. It would be very nice. Okay, then I uh, remove again my D.
drawing. Clear. May I clear and move to the slide with cubic? Yes. Okay. Can I ask a question about the previous uh, slide? Uh, but any case, I should clear my drawing because you you know the drawing moves uh, st stays on the on the slide. Just a second. Clear all drawings, and let look uh, on our clock. It's good. Uh, I think. Oh, okay. Or maybe finish with questions. Let, let's finish with questions, and then we will do break. I will stop my drawing. Uh, you you asking about this slide? Yes. Okay. Uh, about uh, section five. Uh, Choose weak weak combination. Okay. Yes. What what is what I call weak combination? It's a triple of points. It's triple of points. Uh, it may be on different le uh, level, but important that middle point is below both of them. I can put victory sign here. This is the combination. So how, how do, do we achieve when we have four points? We just compare value in the in two middle points, yes? Uh -huh. If uh, left is smaller than right, then V combination will go in this way. And uh, if right is smaller, then of course V combination will, will go in this way. That's all. And and the middle point uh, will be the minimum. And uh, I know if I have V combination. And unimodal fun function, I know that my interval can t uh, include my solution. So I, I enforce my interpolation model also to have minimum, not, not uh, jump out of my interval. I, I am in full, in full control of my situation. Ex ex except of sometimes I really may get slow convergence. And the, uh, that's why uh, um, what we call uh, 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 bisection or safeguard. Safeguard, yes. If we, if we are progressing too small, we just move to say a couple of steps of bisection or golden section. Depends on do we have derivatives or not. Okay, and uh, maybe it's a good point to stop here for 10 minutes, 10 minute break. Okay, and uh, we will. Just a second, Let, let's uh, discuss everything uh, after the break, okay? Okay, so see you, see you in, uh, in five. Uh, Five, uh, uh, Okay. We can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Very yes, much. we can. And uh, there was a question in the need uh, in, in the end of previous hour. Who who was asking? Is he back with us already? Not yet. Okay. Let's move forward to cubic interpolation. Okay. So, and the difference uh, between uh, quadratic and, and cubic interpolation is that quite, uh, quite often uh, we, we have uh, derivatives of our function uh, for free. 
and uh, in this case uh, in this case uh, it's good uh, even if you have a function value and uh, derivatives in two points it's uh, then we have four numbers and it's enough to build the cubic uh, polynomial and again if a cubic polynomial has such slopes that now with slopes we look in direction of each other like v combination then we know that this polynomial has the minimum inside of uh, our interval and this is actually what we are interested in and uh, again uh, if uh, progress is not very good then uh, we may switch to bisection for example for a couple of steps and then go back. Uh, any question, any comment about this? Yeah, Michael, we, we fall back to bisection because we see we can uh, calculate the derivative, right? Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. We are considering case when derivatives are cheaply av available. And this is often the case even uh, if you do one-dimensional optimization for the purpose of minimizing, say, multi-dimensional function along some line, which we will uh, uh, see later, uh, it's quite often pretty cheap to compute derivatives. It's maybe like function calculation of the same or order of uh, number of operations. Uh, the okay. Yes. What, why not calculating the second derivative and uh, having quadratic? Uh, uh, this is uh, one more one more option. It will uh, bring uh, bring us to so-called new Newton method in one dimension. It's also possible if. For free, for example, we have second derivative. Usually, usually this uh, approach with uh, uh, first derivative is very efficient and very fast. But some, uh, sometimes in uh, specific cases, uh, second derivative may be available for free, and then it's good to use it. You're right. We can estimate it from uh, uh, two, two derivatives, uh, like we did the uh, uh, yes, but then uh, we ask question, how do you want to estimate? If you want to create uh, several points which are close to each other, like you did in first. Yes, homework, numerical, numerical. Yes, then you pay with the additional evaluation of function. And here we are very scarcely. Uh, we really want to save every 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 possible function calculation. Okay, okay, let's move forward. Okay, and uh, now can I ask you uh, yes, about yes. Uh, this left? Uh, yes. So uh, after I choose uh, A and B. Okay. Yes. What should I do? Just a second. I have problems with my. How do I see? Just a second. I want to see other students. Uh, after you, uh, again, uh, after in two points, A and B, I have uh, value and slope of the function. Yes? Yeah. Now my goal is to build a cubic polynomial which has the same value and the same slopes in the points a and b as my own function and i de denote this as q q of x yes so i require that q will have value like my function in point a, a and b and derivative like my, my function so i have uh -huh. four conditions and the cubic polynomial i didn't write it here 
but it has uh, four coefficients. And similarly, like we did it in uh, quadratic case, in quadratic case, we had the system of uh, three equations with three unknowns. And in cubic case, we will have system of uh, four, four, four well, equations, equations and four unknowns. We will have four unknown coefficients. Uh -huh. So, in uh, can, can you uh, go please to the previous uh, slide? To the cubic, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, to the cubic slide. Uh, so, after I computed the uh, F and F prime, and I uh, selected uh, A and B in uh, sections uh, four and five. Yes. What should I do next? How do I? Uh, I, the... I I uh, it's it's on on this picture. Yes. Uh -huh. So I I build build my approximation Q. Yes. Mm -hmm. Analytically, I find its minimum because it's simple formula. It's just derivative of cubic function should be zero uh -huh. and uh, this will be my new point and at this point i compute my objective function and its slope so if mm -hmm. slope is looking like in my picture here then i decide that minimum is on the left so mm -hmm. uh, my x new will become instead of b it will be b b b1 and a1 it will be a0 the same mm -hmm. uh, ah, as, as as you see here yes on this picture yes and for this interval uh, you compute uh, uh, the safe ground step uh, again, again i i have uh, two function values and two slopes and uh, again i can compute yes Compute uh, new cubic uh, cubic polynomial. For okay for uh, for this interval. Okay. Yes, I, I hope then, that students who ask questions they did see did watch the lecture because. All, all yes, this, I did. Yeah. Okay. But well, if you did, it's completely okay. Any 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 question is welcome. It's only I hope that you did see, did watch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yes. So th this is the method. And uh, like we told, if progress is small, then you can switch. Uh, is, if the progress is slow, it, it may well ha happen that uh, our function is not very well approximated by cubic parabola. And new point is very close to the rightmost part of the interval. And then we don't have. Uh, uh, fast shrinkage of our interval uncertainty and we if we observe it we switch to base section for a couple of steps and then come back <coughs> and i until when i should re repeat the process until uh, until uh, you you may decide that you want to have this uncertainty interval very small it's it uh, it's a good algorithm because you control your accuracy yes you know that you achieved minimizer with uh, i don't know the accuracy 10 to the minus uh, i don't know 12 and for your purposes it's enough okay uh, thank you and then you stop uh, i have a question regarding the same uh, like when do we stop the, the iterations so like in higher dimension we are talking like here it's one dimension so it's size of interval so in yeah, higher dimension, in, in like higher dim dimension, it's very delicate. Let, let's leave a higher di dim dimension for future. And by the way, in the non-convex optimization, usually it's still very delicate issue. But, but in, is, some, uh, is it something that we are going to cover in this uh, course? Uh, maybe very, very heuristically. In this course, we more concentrated on the constructive part, how, how to move. And when to stop, uh, uh, sometimes you may have this uh, formal criteria. It's not central point of our course, but we may discuss it from time to time. Okay, thank you. Uh, please. Okay. And now we're moving to multi-dimensional optimization. 
uh, and in the lecture you didn't have this picture uh, and uh, I understood that it was difficult to understand what we are talking about. So uh, what is multi-dimensional optimization? Uh, we look for unconstrained, so-called unconstrained minimization, just to minimize some function of X. And here is a drawing we love to do in unconstrained optimization case. Uh, so here are level sets, those lines are level sets of my function. And for example, it look, looks like a narrow valley, deep valley, and we want to find this uh, bottom of this valley. And what and we are staying in some point x naught. And what usually we do, we we choose some dire direction in which function is definitely decreasing. One of simple uh, ways is it uh, to go with minus gradient direction, but there will be better choices as well. So my uh, uh, gradient uh, if if going along level set, we don't change function value, the gradient is opposite. It's the fastest way to change function value. So gradient is uh, orthogonal to level set. Mika? Yes. Is there any reason to choose another direction than the anti-gradient direction? Yes, yes. Uh, we, we will talk. The, the next lecture will be de dedicated the next two, le two lectures will be dedicated to this. And now I just uh, telling you very briefly, you, you, you see my solution is here, yes, X star. And gradient is not so looking in direction of solution, it's looking somewhere here. And what we do often we <coughs> move along this direction, maybe we do one dimensional optimization or we do some crude step. And then we compute new gradient and, and continue. And if our valley is narrow, usually there are many zigzags. And the alternative, which we will learn next, for example, a function of two variable, like it's here, it may be a quadratic function. It, 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 it may be even a simple formula, uh, uh, x1 square, uh, x1 minus x star or, or le let me write down the formula maybe it's good place to write something uh, if I have such a such a function x1 minus x star one first component square plus some number multiplied by x2 uh, minus x star 2 square. Uh, I, I only ask, uh, what will be this number, do you think? It should be large or small uh, to have the plot like we have in our picture? Small. Pay, pay, pay attention, then from X star, if I move vertically, yes, I, I should pass a shorter distance to increase my function. And here I should pass long distance. So my conclusion is that this coefficient is large. So I, I can write here, for example, 100. Okay, it's not. 100 multiplied. So th this is my quadratic function. So I can minimize it with uh, gradient descent and do many zigzags. But actually, if I know the formula, uh, then I can analytically find the minimum of my qu quadratic function. And it's trivial. Yes, in this case, it's trivial. Sometimes it may be more sophisticated quadratic function. It may be something like this, x transpose ax with some positive definite symmetric matrix. 
say plus or minus b transpose x and even in uh, such multi-dimensional case, cases we, we know to find analytically and now uh, one says if my function is not quadratic but it's well approximated with quadratic function why don't i build this quadratic model like somebody asked about one dimensional optimization why don't i use my second derivative and build quadratic model and go to the minimum of quadratic mod model and this will give us a new newton method uh, this just give you taste what uh, is waiting us in the very very near future okay uh, and the, and then we ask uh, okay i have some method let me stop my uh, drawing i i have a method maybe gradient maybe newton method we choose some direction and now i want to do something reasonable with my function along direction d decay and this is uh, gives us a multi-dimensional optimization method with line search and uh, let me annotate uh, clear drawings or should i save let me save first and then clear okay and then we come to this uh, very important topic of okay ah ah okay okay w what i forgot to mention yeah, i i want in arbitrary direction d to have such directions that it will be direction of descent it means that the directional derivative should be uh, negative and we learned that directional derivative is inner product of gradient with direction d so this should be less than zero any question any comment okay and now let us move to the next slide and now uh, this rule uh, what kind of crude uh, line search one can do and still in many uh, algorithms uh, to do them practically working and even uh, provide some theoretical results despite that theory will be not so much theory in, in our course mostly methods so and th and this uh, says that in this formula I start with some relatively large, reasonably large alpha, and I just check if, for example, I discovered that my function, and I, I compute this, it's easier to write phi of alpha. I, I just subtract from my objective function its value at the point xk to have this one dimensional plot starting from zero uh, and uh, okay and and and, th and then I start with uh, large step size okay I see here my function increased why should I move somewhere and uh, increase my function no 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 I will decrease my step <clears throat> and chew and uh, check again in order to provide convergence it's not enough to check that my function is a little bit smaller because maybe it's smaller by one over a million or one over a billion than uh, the original value then i uh, again i will not decrease anything so what people say reasonable rule is to check the slope of this uh, one dimensional plot in the origin when alpha is zero and uh, take some portion of this slope and say if my function decreased at least as good as the linear function with sigma multiplied by c alpha c, c alpha is slope in, in the origin 
then I will stop stop my decrease in my step size. So, and uh, the, 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 this is this um, how how you say this area when I put this um, uh, forgot this word in, in area of uh, stop condition. No, no, no. What, what line? Small short lines. I put it here. Many, many short lines. Easy ball, maybe. Okay. Uh, and the, and the, and this is my this is my stop condition for de decreasing alpha. So I I will end up with this alpha, and then I will go to my new optimization step again. I I will compute new x x k plus one. Compute the function value, gradient, and so on, and do one more line search and continue in this way. So each time you need to calculate the step size again, right? Yes, yes, yes. And also, how do you decide the, or calculate the sigma and the beta values? Okay, uh, sigma and beta values are. Uh, meta parameters of our method and the method is rather robust to the choice so the, this what uh, uh, i guess in the book of nocidal and right i, I even will write this Noc ah, just a second where is my an annotation uh, nocidal And right. This is book on numerical uh, optimization, and this is in our list of uh, recommended books. It's number one, and I really rec uh, recommend this book to anybody who wants to do good practical numerical methods. It's uh, very nicely written. And, and this they uh, rec recommend according to the very large uh, experience, but uh, the method is uh, rather robust so you, you, you can choose actually any beta in this interval and any sigma in this interval, and it will work and if you choose uh, like recommendation says maybe if you check on very different uh, thousand very different problems. You will discover that on on average you will get on average in the worst case you will get good good results. Okay, any any question, any comment? Okay, I I hope it became clear after my clarification. Uh, I I understood that lectures was not enough uh, for full understanding and mainly mainly uh, i think because this picture was lacked in the lecture it 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 comes uh, in the in the next uh, short uh, piece of lecture but be, before we study this uh, so i moved this picture here to to give you a, a little bit more intuition okay so if there is no comment then uh, we finish our uh, official part a little bit early I, I see and now the most interesting like I always tell to students uh, free free mathematical discussion you can you can come uh, now it's like a reception hour with uh, any question first of all desirably today lecture and afterwards any question <coughs> uh, related to course and afterwards any mathematical question and then uh, administrative question or and personal question so you you are welcome to, to stay and uh, you know what i usually do i may stop uh, my recording uh,